Hello Glenwood and welcome to my home. Like many of you, I've been learning to make some new routines in my home. This weekend we remember and celebrate the kindness and the mercy of God. And it will be different. We won't be meeting together. But that shouldn't stop us from remembering and celebrating the goodness of God, beginning with Good Friday. Good Friday is a time that we set apart to commemorate the crucifixion and death of Jesus Christ. And as we do this in our homes, in some new ways, there are three truths about the death of Jesus that I want to encourage you to remember on Good Friday. The first, and perhaps most obvious, is that our Savior suffered for us. Even before being nailed to a cross, Jesus was betrayed by one of his own. He was arrested and falsely accused. He was abused, beaten, scourged, and mocked every step of the way. The righteous Son of God suffered and died a gruesome death. In the moments before Jesus' suffering began, Luke 22, verses 39 through 34, reveal the intensity of emotion Jesus was feeling, knowing what was coming. Luke writes, Jesus went out as usual to the Mount of Olives, and his disciples followed him. On reaching the place, he said to them, Pray that you will not fall into temptation. He withdrew about a stone's throw beyond them, knelt down, and prayed, Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me. Yet not my will, but yours be done. An angel from heaven appeared to him and strengthened him. And being in anguish, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat was like drops of blood falling to the ground. Jesus knew what was coming. He was in anguish. But that didn't shake his resolve to do the Father's will, to give his life to save the lost. On Good Friday, remember the suffering of our Savior. The second thing to remember as we reflect on the death of Jesus is the true reason for sorrow. The agonies of Calvary, the evil of the cross, it's right that we weep for Jesus. But our weeping should not stop there. In Luke chapter 23, verses 26 through 31, Jesus speaks to a group of women weeping for him. Luke writes, As the soldiers led him away, they seized Simon from Cyrene, who was on his way in from the country, and put the cross on him and made him carry it behind Jesus. A large number of people followed him, including women who mourned and wailed for him. Jesus turned and said to them, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me. Weep for yourselves and for your children. For the time will come when you will say, Blessed are the, ch blessed are the childless women, the wombs that never bore and the breasts that never nursed. Then they will say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, cover us. For if people do these things when the tree is green, what will happen when it is dry? Jesus tells these women, Jesus tells us, that he was not going to the cross for our sympathy. In fact, in this dire moment in Jesus' life, he shows concern for those who are weeping for him. Jesus warns these women of the destruction that would come on their people. What we see in the Gospels is that Jesus willingly went to the cross to secure forgiveness for those who repent, for those who put their faith in him. He went to the cross to take the punishment that these women deserve. He went to the cross to take the punishment that we deserve. Jesus suffered so that repentance for the forgiveness of sins might be proclaimed in his name in every nation, and it would all begin in Jerusalem. The right response to Jesus' death is not merely sympathy, but repentance. And that takes us to the third thing to remember. On Good Friday, remember why Good Friday is good. In the account of the crucifixion, one of the details that I marvel at is what Jesus says to the Father while he's being crucified. In Luke 23, verses 33 and 34, we read, When they came to the place called the Skull, they crucified him there, along with the criminals, one on his right, the other on his left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. 
The other focus of Jesus in the midst of his own suffering is incredible. The compassion and prayer to the Father to forgive those who were crucifying him. It, it doesn't make any sense. But when we take a step back from the intensity of this moment and consider how the crucifixion of Jesus fits into the story of the Bible, Jesus' words actually make perfect sense. They make sense because securing forgiveness was Jesus' mission all along. It was why he became like us in the first place. When we read the Old Testament and see the day in and day out sacrifices in the tabernacle and the temple, we find out in Jesus that they pointed to him. They pointed to the complete forgiveness that God would provide through a perfect and willing sacrifice. God's mighty deliverance from Egyptian bondage and the sparing of the firstborn through the blood of a lamb pointed to an even greater deliverance through the blood of the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. It seems crazy to say that the greatest injustice of all time was good, but it's true. The suffering and crucifixion of Jesus has brought complete forgiveness and new life through the Spirit of God in the new covenant. Remember why Good Friday is good. Even as we do our best to navigate these trying circumstances, as we feel anxious and isolated, I want to encourage you to make time to remember and marvel at what God has done for us through the cross. You may already have a plan for how to do that on Good Friday, but one really simple yet meaningful idea would be to read through the accounts of Jesus' suffering and death in the Gospels. Hear firsthand from those who were there. If you have a roommate or family that you live with, invite them to join you. Or you could call a friend and read together over the phone. Make time to remember the sacrifice of Jesus. And then be intentional about responding with repentance and gratitude for what God did for us on Good Friday. In addition to this, we've highlighted some resources on our website, including a recording of last year's Good Friday service, as well as some sermons on the suffering and death of Jesus Christ. Our hope is that these would help you remember well and give thanks to God for his goodness in Jesus.